In today's video, I will be exploring the world of phishing kits, navigating through the dark web and telegram channels, discovering phishing kits offered on the dark web, its capabilities and features, and just overall getting a synopsis of what phishing kits look like. I'm gonna be conducting my analysis through some threat hunting and just navigating through telegram channels. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, phishing kits provide a unique opportunity for script kitties to come in and lure as many victims as possible. The services offered by phishing kits are manuals, user documentation, templates, web pages. Now at its core, phishing kits make it easier to do a whole bunch of things and, and general features and phishing kits usually involve having access to well-designed templates, impersonating different companies, including social media networks, banks, popular websites. For cyber criminals without much technical knowledge, phishing kits are probably gonna be your best bet. Uh, so they're great for conducting phishing campaigns. As with anything, phishing kits, some are advanced, some are basic. The basic ones usually are just gonna be a template of web pages, which then send the user credentials from a, you know, a login prompt, a malicious login prompt to maybe an email address or a, a hidden text file or folder. And then advanced phishing kits are gonna have various functionalities. One of the interesting functionalities that's been developed recently here is uh, the stealing of 2FA codes, specifically SMS codes, which uh, allow you, the user to collect the session cookie. All right, so with some basic information overviewed here, it's time to actually take a look at basic and advanced phishing kits and see the capabilities, the prices, and overall functionalities offered, and just kind of get a synopsis. Let's just see what happens. So to do this, I have Hunix up, and uh, yeah, well, let's transition over to the desktop and see what I can find. To start off my search, I will be using Flare. Flare is a threat exposure management and threat intelligence platform, which continuously scans the open web and illicit networks such as web forms, telegram channels and chat logs, looks for lookalike domains, leaked credentials, and collects a lot of different telemetry here. So on the back end of Flare, as you can see, I am in the identifiers tab and you can see four identifiers or keywords, uh, specifically my name, my domain and phishing kits. So these are the specific keywords that I want to filter and, and look into the illicit networks and see what's going on. So if I actually go up to the events and uh, just quickly go down to phishing git as an example, you're gonna be able to see a whole bunch of information being pulled up, specifically GitHub repositories, mentioning the keyword phishing kits. So I can actually go to the filters and look into various uh, different things. I will, first, I'm gonna start by uh, unselecting all of them except the open web, just to see what's on the clear internet here. and. Not shockingly, there are a lot of GitHub repositories mentioning phishing kits. So you can actually go and, and click one of these and look at the metadata uh, specifically regarding this particular event type. Uh, so you can see today's date was the first day that this was seen, uh, and it actually gives you a link to the specific GitHub repository mentioning phishing kit. So if we click this, it looks like this is gonna be some, I don't even know, random website. But ultimately, um, this gives me a great grounds to at least start my threat hunting activity. So phishing kits can be found everywhere on the open web, of course. A lot of it maybe is gonna be on GitHub. Uh, I went ahead and found a particular phishing kit, which was a little bit interesting, easy to set up. Here on Flare, searching the open web, I stumbled upon a specific GitHub repository which shows and reveals phishing kits and, and tracks the latest and greatest. And I've actually went ahead and cloned this onto my Kali uh, virtual machine here and set everything up. So as you can see, uh, for basically creating this web server, I'm just running a little PHP-S and this will allow me to host a local web server. And as you can see, it's an Office 365 uh, page, login page specifically. What's interesting and unique about this is everything looks like it would be. You have dynamic jQuery coming on and even you can do something such as uh, dboo-da and it is going to actually give you a um, 
input validation check ensuring that you're entering in an email address or a phone number. So these kits can be pretty advanced with catching various errors such as this. Looking into the repository for this specific kit, as you can see, it's pretty basic. Uh, if we look at the Office 360 PHP file, this is what is going to power the sending of the login information to somewhere else, a remote address. And in this specific case, it looks like it is mailing to a specific hard-coded address that you can add. Uh, so when a user tries entering in their username and password, it will just send to the hard-coded email address. Uh, so pretty basic and straightforward. Uh, upon also going through Flare through the word of or identifier of phishing kit, I also stumbled upon a really cool GitHub repository called Phishing Kit Yara Rules, and it lists a huge amount of phishing kits and its subsequent Yara rules. Uh, so this provides a great starting point too, to take a look into uh, phishing kits provided out there. Obviously if there are a lot and there's various different names. So these are some basic phishing kits. Uh, what about some advanced ones? Well, there was one specific one that I set up last year actually called Evil Jinx 2, which allowed you to steal 2FA or SMS codes and upload a session cookie and impersonate the subsequent user. I'm not going to be setting that, that up in today's video. Uh, I'm actually going to be looking for advanced phishing kits in the underground marketplace. Now, one thing you have to remember about these free phishing kits like this one is it's pretty well known that authors who distribute phishing kits for free are probably going to put in some sort of backdoor so that they are logging the information uh, that you are collecting from users if you are a script kitty. And so, um, you know, you run the, the risk of having a hard-coded backdoor in a free phishing kit. And uh, as a script kitty, if you want to, you know, use your kit for yourself, that may not be the best. So with that being said, it's time to get into the dark web. And really that's all that basically means for me is logging into Hunix and exploring around the various Telegram chat channels to see what I can come up with. Uh, now I'm gonna be using Flare and yeah, to do this, it's gonna be a little bit interesting here. All right, so back on Flare here, I have put in my filter for illicit networks and open web. And on the right here is this metrics view, which shows you the last 30 days of events regarding phishing kits. What's interesting about this here is that you actually get the most active threat actors under their sock, sock puppet handle or whatever you know their, their name is and also their active sources. So specifically GitHub is the largest because I have the open web, but the underground forums cracked and nulled are second and third. Uh, so it's very interesting to see. And I think this would be interesting to see when there is a serious CVE announced and how it's being talked about in the illicit networks such as nulled or Telegram or XSS, whatever that is. And it's cool that this is all collected here in front of me. You can also create alerts on Flare to notify you when a specific keyword, maybe it's your company's domain uh, or whatever that may be, and, and notify you that that particular keyword is being talked about. Now, as you can see here in my metrics view, Telegram looks like it is a pretty popular medium for talking about phishing kits. So with that being said, I went ahead for the last about two weeks here I've been chatting with various individuals regarding phishing kits, and uh, I've joined several Telegram servers and, and learned some interesting new things. After launching Kunix, I created a Telegram account using a temporary phone number via Google Voice as I didn't want my real phone number attached to this burner. Over the course of a few weeks, I had three significant encounters with individuals at Telegram servers inquiring about their phishing kit services. Okay, so for my first individual here is this event on September 29th when I found this threat actor who is promoting their phishing kit on Crime Market. And so via Hunix, I 
proceeded to copy the link from Flare and navigate to Hunix. And here it is in front of me. Um, what's interesting about this specific post is that this individual who I end up talking to here, I'll show you in a moment, um, just literally posts the same exact thing. Uh, I don't know, like every few days of some sorts, posted on September 20th, 29th. Uh, he just continues to update the same form post. So uh, going over to Telegram here, my chat log with SecCode or SecCode or whatever is pretty short. And as you can tell, my script kitty wannabe skills here are not the greatest. So I asked if, you know, he was promoting stuff. So for the specific phishing kit that SecCode is promoting, it appears the total price is $600. Uh, it gives you a list of the features, including country filter, user agent filter, mobile and PC, and many more. There's also a bottom tier for $300. So scrolling down here, uh, you can tell that there are script kitties eager to, to start using this specific kit. Um, so he mentioned that you can go to the Telegram and chat with him for inquiring more about this specific kit. So I went ahead, I go over to Telegram, and as you can tell, my chat log is pretty short, but we do have a small chat log with SecCode. So reviewing this short chat log here with SecCode, you can see that I'm not the best at impersonating script kitty wannabe like behaviors, uh, but as you can see, the service is relatively easy to set up, I guess, if you actually want to purchase the fishing kit. Of course, I can't do that, but uh, it was interesting just to talk about how many customers use this and just to see if I could extract any information. All right, so for my second encounter here, I am investigating Evil Proxy, which is an advanced phishing kit that's been around for well over a year. And specifically, this kit became kind of famous for stealing 2FA tokens to impersonate uh, users via stealing their session cookies. So here in front of me, I've put Evil Proxy into Flare. And uh, I was looking around a couple of weeks ago and I stumbled upon a specific user who went by Evil Proxy Official. So I proceeded to find their Telegram handle and uh, well, I ended up getting to chat with them specifically. So for this in particular, uh, as you can see, I ask him and he forwards me all of the details for this phishing service. Uh, now my chat game is terrible. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of work to do, but what's interesting to me about this encounter is seriously how easy it is to basically get yourself up and running with one of the most advanced fishing kits out on the market right now. Now, whether this is a legitimate or not, I have no idea, but you can get in contact with these individuals it, like it's, you know, just DMing somebody on Instagram almost. And uh, it, it's pretty unbelievable. So if you know where to look, you can find these Telegram channels and users. Um, and this is just quite interesting. So for this particular service that he is offering, as you can tell here, uh, there are, looks like like a, a 20 to 31 day price range. So you only get the price for, you know, a set, certain amount of time, a subscription service, which is interesting to me. So it's not just like a one-time fee like SecCode was asking for. This in particular is looking for, uh, you know, 600 bucks for 31 days or 250 bucks. Uh, and it's pretty interesting too that they offer a specific tier for Google services. Um, now, I'm not gonna be able to pay for this and look into this because I don't have the funds to do this and I obviously don't wanna promote uh, cyber underground market content. Basically, the lesson of this encounter is, in my opinion, how easy it is to contact these particular individuals. So as you can tell, I've been doing this over the past few weeks on Flare, uh, searching different Telegram channels and looking for anything that is unique. Uh, so for my final encounter, encounter three, uh, I proceeded to join a Telegram channel or server. 
and it's called King Cracker. I, again, I found this on Flare a couple weeks ago, uh, and there are 646 members currently. So I reached out, I don't know, maybe like a month ago on this server to see if anyone was advertising a fishing kit. And since then, since joining this Telegram server, we're getting a huge spam of individuals promoting their services. But not only are we having free promotional services, we're having script kitties in this chat log, um, myself included as one of them. Uh, so what was interesting is the screenshots that came up a couple of days ago about this individual promoting their VPS service. Now this is tangential to phishing services, uh, but he's just like spamming a whole bunch of screenshots of kind of like self-incriminating evidence of like what his particular VPS service can do. And um, I don't know, it's just, I thought that was like an interesting artifact to know from this. Uh, so in particular for this server, there are individuals out there pr promoting their services. So taking a look at this video here, like this is a better design than my own Cyber Academy website. I mean, these people are legitimate here. Uh, and I know I'm like kind of stating all the obvious, but what's again interesting is how you have a collection of members who come in, they're promoting their phishing services and uh, or whatever their service may be. And you know, they give you these screenshots. I mean, yeah, of course. So this was all made very easy by using the Flare platform. Without this, it would have been having to go through some hoops and hurdles to find the particular resources, but it's pretty cool that you can actually go and, and look at illicit networks, telegram channels, chat logs, whatever that may be. All right, so this will conclude my investigation into phishing kits. As you can see, I'm just touching the surface with the information you can collect. And uh, so thanks for Flare for sponsoring today's video and augmenting my process here. If you're interested in a video series similar to this one where I kind of go out and try to find random information, leave a comment in the description below. And yeah, until the next time, well, have a good day.